This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So why don't we get started with the 1100 scale Master Grade Gundam Ultron for the feature length film Gundam Inlet's Waltz. And without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another unique build from the good folks from Bendai. And if this is your first time to this YouTube channel, welcome. So we are literally down to the last, the last two Mamma Jammas of the Endless Waltz series of Gundam Wing. And thus, my dudes and does, we're going to be probably building probably bar the second most popular mobile suit of that franchise, Ultron Gundam. Now, as you can see here from the box art, there's nothing too crazy as you would expect from a P Bandai product. Nothing on the left side, nothing on the right beside some promotional work that you see on top. And if you look very, very closely in the lower left hand corner, you'll see a small glimpse of Wing Gundam Zero. Now, around this time, they already released a Master Grade variant of this particular mobile suit, but then several years later, which actually was last year, they released a Verkog kit, which we're definitely going to be building in the next several weeks. But right now, we're going to be focusing on Ultron on this beautiful color separation. I have to say, the first thing you see on this instruction map is the bold greens and soft lush greens, and then the bright reds, and then the yellow orange, and then a little bit of hint of gold. Love that color separation, makes this guy really dynamic. As for the first kit, uh, sorry, first page, you get a small glimpse of the runners, but the weapon accessories are probably the most charming part about this most. You get the twin bean trident, as well as the iconic dragon fangs. Now, those dragon fangs are probably the most impressive looking things I've seen in an endless wall lineup, but that's gonna be definitely a challenge when it comes to putting an extension of electro wiring into those particular arms. As for the additional page, it gives you a good glimpse how they actually transform the weapons inside and out, and in the very back, tells you how to apply the water slide decals and where you place them onto this particular mobile suit and in the very lower hand bottom of it you get a beautiful color chart to do some custom painting which I am definitely going to do for this particular mobile suit. Now as for the little pilot you definitely get small little figurines of Wu Fei, hopefully I got that name right, and then that pretty much wraps up what you expect inside this instruction manual. Now for the runners, this is where things kind of interesting, you get two different tones of greens, lots of dark greens but a very very small selection of green pieces, you get a small slower selection of white runners, now these particular pylons are going to be used to actually hold the, um, the dragon fangs upright when you want to put them in dynamic poses. Two little figurines of Wu Fei, which is absolutely great. They're beautifully sculpted, which I love that attention to detail. Now for the other runners, you get two of the Triton Beam, I guess you can say weapons on both sides. In the very lower left hand corner, you get the very small, but at the same time, bold water slide decals. This is something you would expect from a P Bandai model kit, and I love that attention to detail. And a handful of gray runners for the inner frame, which is absolutely great. A small assortment of red runners for the actual tool dual fang weapons and a small selection of sticker decals for selected key areas especially around the eyes and the camera module a handful of white runners which is pretty much not a lot but enough what you can work with and a small selection of slightly mustard yellow gold runners now these particular yellow runners aren't that bad but a little bit more gold paint make this guy look really dynamic and that pretty much wraps it up. Nothing too crazy, nothing over the top, but just enough to make this mobile suit absolutely interesting to build. So, as you can clearly see here, I've already taken the liberty of cutting out every single runner to make this process go a little bit more efficient, so I'm going to be tackling the arms and legs first because they are the most repetitive parts for this mobile suit to accomplish a lot more faster, and then I'll work my way up to doing the torso at the very end.
Alright, so we finally reached the part of the mobile suit that I'm actually super excited to get started on, and that's installing LED lights inside the dragon fangs. Now, this part is optional, you don't have to do this, but I just wanted to add a little bit more custom flair to it because this housing area is very well sculpted and definitely kind of screaming to add some custom flair to it. So, since there's just enough hollow out area in there to actually stuff in all electrical wiring, I'm gonna cut it in a way where I'm gonna make a little bit of a divot to sneak in a chip LED light so that way I can make both dual fangs really pop out and look really good. Now, the choice of the LED lights I'm going to be using on here aren't going to be super bright. I went with the option of using a yellow LED light instead of a warm white. I don't want to be too intense, but just enough where it gives a little bit more personality to it to make it look really cool. So as you saw up top, I marked the areas that I want to cut out. So I'll be marking it with my snippers. And then once I get the right kind of shape I want, I'm going to be hollowing that area with an X-Acto blade so that way the chip LED light can sit nice and snug in there.
complete. So we finally reached the part of the most tedious part of every single mosa that I have done in this YouTube channel, and that is actually painting the eyes. Now in the past, I would use like a thin, um, fine tip brush to make that effect look really good. But over time, when you put an LED light behind it, you tend to miss some areas and it definitely drives you crazy. So what I'm gonna end up doing is actually implementing a system that I've done for all my mold suit is putting a masking tape over the area and then using an exacto blade to hollow out those shapes for the eyes. Now, this is pretty small stuff. So I'm gonna be using an actual magnifying glass to make sure I get the precision done correctly. Once again, this is optional. You don't have to do this method, but to help to reduce the strain in your eyes, I would definitely recommend you pick up a magnifying glass to help reduce your eye strain. Definitely works for me. Then once I get this completely cut out, I'm gonna be using Vallejo's black primer to completely mask out the eyes around the side and at the same time in the front. So that way you get that nice clean look. Alright my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this mobile suit. So, first off, 
it's a great kit. A little expensive when it comes to purchasing it since it's a P Bandai exclusive. But at the same time, I had a blast building that guy. I enjoy the three different tones of greens. I was able to implement like a highlights uh, color scheme on the dark green areas. And for the greens, I finally got a chance to try out my Vallejo. I guess it was like olive gold for the first time. <laughs> I literally bought that paint like four months ago as I was preparing to build these mold suits. So, Oh, I was so I was so happy how the the effect turned out. So, yeah. Once again, in this world's kits are killing it when it comes to color separation, and I love that attention to detail, man. It's really really cool. Now, there are some concerning parts of this mold suit, and that was around the area of the dragon fangs. Now, when I installed the dragon fangs on one arm, everything seemed pretty hunky dory. That is, when you apply just the right kind of pressure to snap them together the plastic broke. Now, I'm pretty positive that, that this has nothing to do with my choice of paints or the way how it was protected or hell, even the way how it was implemented. It's just one of those things that definitely happens when you build model kits. Sometimes things are gonna work, sometimes things are gonna break and you just have to roll with it. Fortunately enough for me, I had some super glue at hand that got that problem fixed, but definitely not a problem. Um, another thing this mobile suit definitely has, it has tons of unnecessary runners that come with this model kit. Now I understand that these particular runners are for a different variant of Ultron in season one of Wing Gundam, but for me it's a little too distracting when it comes to putting this guy together. At the same time, it's definitely not welcome. So I, I wish they just don't continue that method when it comes to putting runners in their mobile suits, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm not complaining about it. Or am I? <laughs> but um, another thing I'd really dig, I love the uh, twin beam tritons. That's a nice little accessory. Uh, I had a lot of fun adding a little bit more um, custom um, painting flair to it. And the dragon fangs. By far the coolest part of this mobile suit, but definitely the most stressful part when it comes to installing LED lights. I had a vision what I wanted to do, but unfortunately my electrical wiring was just a tad too short to really implement the kind of dynamic um, flare I wanted to do with this mobile suit, so that's on me. But when you do put the attachments on for both of the dual fangs, there are some weight inconsistencies there, so that's why they um, give you these little pylons so that we can do like really cool dynamic poses. But that means you still have to buy an action base and then implement that action base with your mobile suit to make the dynamic poses that you want. So you can imagine, it's pretty stressful, but you guys will get through it just fine. And uh, yeah, great kit, man. It's a P Bandai kit, it is expensive, but just keep that in mind when you buy this. But overall, great kit. Check it out when you guys have the chance. And like that, my dudes and dudes, we have reached the end of this video. And thank you guys so much for the likes, comments, and subscribes. Big thank you for the new patrons, and a big thank you to the new subscribers that came in at the end of last month. You guys are incredible. And like that, I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.